Yeah. I like to call the uh, regular council meeting of May 2023, May 23rd, 2023 to order. Can I get the opening statement read? <laughs> As we go to the traditional territory of the Treaty Eight Nations, to conduct the business of the District of Chatham, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community, and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in our best interest. Thank you. When adopting the agenda for May 23rd, 2023, please include the following item as a late item, RA4, 2023 road repaving expansion of project scope. Motion to adopt with the additional item. Second. Second. Carry. Um, can I get um, minutes from the previous? Council meeting held on May 1st, 2023. Motion to receive. Second. Carried. We have delegations and presentations. D1, Tracy Hoffman, ICBC, uh, road safety in your community. Welcome, Tracy. We have delegations and presentations. Tracy Hoffman, ICBC, RE Road Safety in your community. Hello. Um, thank you uh, for having me at your meeting today. Um, it's an honor uh, and a privilege to be out here to speak. Um, my name is Tracy Austin. I'm the new Road Safety and Community Coordinator for Northern BC. Some of you may have met my predecessor, Jeff McDonald, in the past, so uh, if you have me know I have to choose to fill. Um, I am into this role, but not new to ICBC. Uh, I've been with ICBC about 23 years, uh, close to it. Um, started out with claims, and the majority of my time was spent in driver licensing. So I do have a, a very good background on ICBC. Um, I'm just going to share my screen here. I have a PowerPoint presentation to go over. Cool. Bear with me a moment here. Uh, we're just going to go. My apologies, I am new to uh, film. All right. Um, so in my uh, past role, one of my past roles for my CEC, I was a driver and founder, so I had the chance to uh, spend some time in Chatham last fall. I came up to do some more tests there, and uh, I loved the community. Um, I love all the car games, it was amazing. Uh, people were friendly. Uh, you know, serve my coffee by our safety officer, it's important. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to working with the community um, with water road safety uh, issues and, and issues that you have. Uh, so of course, when you think of ICBC, you know, when you think of you know, insurance, um, claims, fire licensing, um, but we also have uh, the road safety coordinators like myself who, you know, champion like safe driving culture um, and this is a safer community for, for everyone. Um, we work with partners like the RCMP, um, I currently met, uh, or recently met Sergeant Oni uh, and Tony Oni at the NCLDA um, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm looking forward to working with her um, on any more safety issues in the community, as well as yourself, as well as yourself, sorry. And um, we, uh, we're going to do uh, a lot of different things to support um, customer safety and your community member safety on the road. And we do want to keep um, members of the community involved um, when uh, developing these solutions. So as I mentioned, I'm looking forward, looking forward to working with you and, and with the local RCMP as well. Um, we do a lot of different things um, in Chatland to uh, support your uh, community in the, uh, involving road improvements, um, various road safety and auto crime initiatives, uh, providing resources, online resources to educators, and um, road safety presentation speakers uh, to your students. So uh, in April, we provided two presentations, uh, one to Chatham Secondary and one to Peace Christian. Um, the speaker was uh, Tiana Tilder here, 
And um, I don't know if any of you had a chance to attend or not. Um, I sent out an invite there, but uh, the presentation was well received by students and uh, staff alike. Yeah. Um, so I took a test on working with the RCA and everything as well. And uh, so every year, our RCA has to be partners with the RCA and other stakeholders uh, like myself to put on awareness campaigns around preventable causes of crashes. So May is high risk and speed um, awareness month. And uh, basically, there are about uh, eight. Um, I'm so sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> I'm kind of skipped it. But, um, there are um, 80 uh, fatalities every year, as you can see, uh, including 12 uh, in the north. And uh, one thing I touched upon uh, at the NCLTA, um, where I missed a lot of you, um, is our road improvement program uh, that seems to be a really popular thing um, with I like for it to be in the community. So uh, we often cost share with municipal projects and uh, ministry projects as well on uh, making intersections safer, um, upgrading signs, um, like a road safety audit in the community, um, you know, checking out road signs, marking, that sort of thing. And uh, I do have the information from our road safety engineer, Dave Dean, uh, that I can pass on if you'd like. And something that's <coughs> new that you may or may not be aware of is that you can find various track statistics um, regarding the whole province on ICBC.com. And once I've done the presentation, I'll kind of go over that a little bit how to get in there. Um, but you can actually even drill right down to different intersections in Shetland. So I think that might be something that you guys are interested in. Um, so you can check out crashes at intersections, you can uh, check out uh, wildlife collision numbers, um, accidents related uh, to alcohol or obstructed driving, uh, different things like that. Uh, so there's a lot of quick statistics on there, you can just look at it at a glance, and then other ones where you can kind of drill down to really look at the specifics that you might be interested in. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, so some of those statistics I found on ICBC.com. Um, so in between uh, 2017 and 2021, there were 1,700 crashes reported to ICBC uh, under the municipality of Chetland. So this over 1,500 of those were reported to be property damage only. Um, 185 of those 1,700 were uh, reported to be had injuries or fatalities. Um, a lot of animal collisions. Uh, almost 550 of those collisions were uh, involving animals, either wild or domestic. So that's you know that's a problem in the north. And um, you know five of those crashes involved a motorcycle. So again, there's lots of really um, interesting and, and neat information that you can uh, find on there. Um, and my sincere apologies, I am, I am new at this, this is my first Zoom presentation and I lost a few slides. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? But I don't have any down there. Anybody have some? It doesn't look like there's any questions. Okay. Um, I'll just, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for uh, a moment here, or actually just end the presentation, and I'll just kind of show you a little bit about the uh, specifics. Okay. Right there. So, yeah, if you are uh, interested, I'm just going to move this here. So there's lots of different stats you can look at um, in your community and in others. So this is a crash count in North Central BC. So you can see a lot of different municipalities there. Um, let's go look at Chetland. Um, we can go down to the municipality here. I'm just going to uncheck all. Uh, head down to Chetland here. And we'll apply that. And uh, oh, there we go. So that's where you can see about the 1,700 um, crashes um, in your community from 2017 to 21 from. Uh, and again, if you're interested, if there's a certain intersection of note, um, you can go right into uh, the street name um, Excuse me, Tracy. and choose one. So if there's an area of concern in your community, Tracy, uh, sorry. Okay. Um, we can't see okay. your, sorry, we can't see your screen. Whatever you're sharing, it's, we don't see it. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry about that. Let me try that again. 
2022-2023 statistics would be entered um, onto the website? Um, usually late summer. Late summer or fall. Thank you.
are you done your presentation, Tracy? I am, and again, I apologize. I missed a couple of slides there, um, but I, I think I got all of the information I wanted to go across. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, please feel free to reach out to me anytime with any um, any questions at all, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And uh, I will look into the question about the uh, the aggregate and the sound on the uh, the road standpoint. So thank you again. Um, I appreciate that. Um, hopefully, I'll have the time or uh, be invited back another time where I can do a better job with this presentation. So thank you again, and thank you for your patience. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Very informative. is from Communicol, Matt Rines and Lisa Rizzle. Thank you for joining us. Good evening, thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Matt Rimes. I'm the Vice President of Maintenance for Kanuma Resources. Uh, with me this evening, uh, Lisa Rizzle, who's our Vice President of Indigenous Affairs and Community Relations, as well as Kristen Ghostkeeper, who's our Coordinator for Community, community Relations. And thank you. My eyes are good, but not quite that good, so thank you. So, can you at a glance, so what, where are our existing coal reserves? So, our existing coal reserves are in the, the Peace River Coal District, which you can see in the, the upper left or upper right hand portion. Uh, we've got Willow Creek Mine, the Brule Mine, Wolverine Mine, and the Quintet Mine. So, the Quintet Mine is the, uh, the most recent uh, mine that we've just purchased, and we're looking to bring that through uh, and back into production. Uh, you'll see in location to where the Peace River Coal Fields are, uh, strategically placed to be able to have access through to Prince Rupert. So it's uh, all of our coal will come out of our existing sites on the rail, Prince George, and straight across to Prince Rupert. So Kanuma mission, vision, and values. So why are we here? What, what, what do we do? So our vision statement, or why we exist, is to become Canada's premier, low-cost, sustainable exporter of steel-making coal. So our mission statement, or what we do, can't read that word for word from here. So to operate and grow our steel making business. Can I go up? So our mission statement, what we do is safely operate and grow our steel making business to achieve leading coal shareholder returns while creating sustainable value for our employees, customers, business partners, communities, and environments in which we operate. So our main values, safety is our number one main value. So we're accountable and disciplined to eliminate every safety risk. So growth, we invest in the quality, efficiency, and innovation to create a profitable and predictable future. One can do problem. We're productive, resilient, and enthusiastic problem solvers, working as a team to deliver outstanding results. Heart, we choose to be professional, respectful, and inclusive in everything we do. And sustainability, we operate today and find tomorrow in a way that will sustain the health of our employees, business partners, community, and So pure play North American steel making coal producer and 100% exporter. So I'll just start on this slide of the, of the slide and we'll, we'll, we'll look at our existing operations. But 2022 production in metallurgical plums 
if you look at our Wolverine, Willow Creek, and Grove Line, our Grove Line was 41% of the overall terrain produced. Our Willow Creek site was 31%, and our Wolverine site was 28%. So a product of production by type of hard coating coal versus PCI coal, two different types of coal, is 53% for PCI and 40, 47 for hard coating. So if we look at our content site, we're going to be looking at bringing that online, that being 2.6 million ton per year. It'll be a premium, mid volatile, volatile hard coating coal. Uh, we'll be using the existing infrastructure, which includes the rail loadouts and the, and the, uh, the rail infrastructure for the future development we're working on restarting that asset. So our Willow Creek mine is a production of 1.5 million. Uh, key, key products of that are premium and volatile hard coating coal with a 68 plus CSR logistics, the existing coal prep plant, rail loadout, and the CN rail line. Future developments for the Willow Creek, or the Willow Creek extension, reflects about 15.6 million tons of reserve with the 11 year mine. The rural mine is a 2 million ton capacity, so the three right now in production, that's, that's by far our base volume. Uh, we do run a premium ultra low volatile pulverized coal injection in the market for PCI. Uh, we truck that coal between rural and Willow Creek, it gets processed at the Willow Creek plant, and then move on the rail work from there. So we've got the application that is submitted for, uh, for the rural mine to extend its mine life to 1.6. And then our Wolverine mine site is at 1.8 million ton a year. Premium mid bowl hard coating coal. Uh, we use the existing rail line and prep plant that was there. And we're undergoing the permitting process for the permit as well. Great. As Matt noted, um, we purchased the Quintet mine from Tech in February of this year, and we're focused on restarting that mine. So that mine operated from 1980, the early 80s until 2000, and then it was put into care and maintenance. Um, Tech did submit a restart plan for the Quintet mine in 2013, and it was approved in 2014. However, at that time, um, coal prices had declined, so the company made the decision to not restart the Quintet line. Um, we did purchase it in February and we are working on submitting a restart um, application to the government um, to mine, uh, to, to start mining at Quintet in later this year, in, in the third quarter, fourth quarter of 2023. We have done some exploration. So shortly after we um, acquired the mine, we started to do drilling to better understand the coal reserve, but also to understand the waste rock and the chemistry of the waste rock. Because one thing that we are doing at the Quintet mine is being very thoughtful in terms of the mine plan and water management plan so that we can minimize our impact, minimize our disturbance and the mine plan and water management plan that we are, that we will be proposing will have less of an impact than what was approved um, when tech submitted it in 2013. And that will also address many of um, some of the environmental impacts that we've had at other operations. So we've learned from that and we're really focused on minimizing impact. And one thing that's necessary is to understand the chemical characterization of waste rock so that we can design the mine to, for water to avoid um, that waste rock. So that exploration program happened in February and it was about a 60 day um, program and we're currently analyzing those results. We also focus on sustainability and I won't get into the details here. We did bring our sustainability reports so we'll share those with um, Lenora to, to share for those that are interested. And there's really four pillars in our, in our sustainability um, approach. So one of course is environmental and there's a strong focus on water management and water treatment. And again, it's to minimize the impact um, to the downstream environment and then also on reclamation. So where possible to reclaim areas where we're no longer mining um, and we, were, we are increasing the reclamation that we're doing. In terms of social, um, this is an area that Kristen and I focus a lot of our attention on. So it's working with um, Indigenous peoples and communities like Chetwin and Tumbler Ridge and Mackenzie 
um, so that we are involved and supporting the community as well as addressing any concerns and, and issues. We absolutely um, feel privileged and, and understand the responsibility it is to operate on Treaty 8 and also the impacts that we do have on the local communities and that's something that we're very committed to. Included in the social area is also employee engagement um, and we're focused on fostering a diverse and equitable work environment. 25% um, of our employees are female and um, as a female, I'll proudly say, and Matt can probably speak to this better than I can, that our female operators are some of our best and certainly have the reputation of taking great care with, the, with our equipment. And 6% of our um, employees are also self-identify as First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. And finally, um, I'll just governance. So of course, when you're talking about sustainability, you have to you, you, you prescribe to different standards. So we prescribe to two standards. Um, that focus on climate change as well as um, just other sustainability metrics. And finally, in the area of climate change, the area that we're focused on this year to reduce climate change emissions is really to reduce the use of diesel fuel. And that's by operating more efficiently and focusing on um, not idling equipment when necessary. We've, we have some information here um, that's specific to Chetwin. So as an example, in 2022, the spend um, with local suppliers in Northeast BC was about 110 million. And of that 110 million, 100 million was with businesses that are based out of Chetwin. And that has to do with the coal haul, as well as a lot of the major earthwork um, companies that we use also are based in Chetwin. So the majority of our local procurement is with Chetwin businesses. Um, this year, I think we're targeting about $40 million thus far. So we're on track to exceeding what we spent um, in 2022. 20% of our workforce live in Chetland, um, so of over 200 employees. And that would only be, uh, Tumblr Ridge has a larger percentage, um, where I think it's like 40 or 60%. And then finally, there's been an increased effort and emphasis on being involved in the community. Um, Kayla's in the back and she's a great community <laughs> citizen and is involved in, like, I'm not surprised to see her, her today, <laughs> like practically everything. And we do know because we are from small communities ourselves that really it's not for profit associations that make communities vibrant. Um, and I do also want to acknowledge and recognize the District of Chetwin for winning the leadership award um, from the Northern, what is it? NCLGA Association <laughs> and a lot of the initiatives they're really grassroots initiatives so we're, we're always looking for opportunities to support um, local communities and local not-for-profit associations um, we Kristen recently participated in the mental health summit at the Chetwin Ho uh, secondary school and we also hosted last month um, a group of grade 9 students from Tumblr Ridge at one of our mine sites so that's really a, a quick update on what we do. Um, thank you for inviting us. Reach out at any time uh, with questions or concerns. Um, we certainly did appreciate last year um, when there were concerns that we had the opportunity to address those and try to resolve those um, in a way that was um, satisfactory, certainly to mayor and council, but also the, the, the citizens of Chapman. Does anybody have any questions? One. Hello, thank you for coming and speaking to us today. Uh, the information is definitely great. I actually have something a little off topic to ask you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping you're able to, to answer it. I've actually had the privilege of meeting quite a few new families to Chetwind who I believe have moved here internationally yes. um, to work with Canuma Cool. That's right. Um, and I'm you know thrilled to meet such um, new people to the community and to bring some diversity into Chetwind. But I'm wondering if you could speak to any struggles you have with hiring locally. So, I mean, our goal is to hire locally and to support local, like local and local residents, um, businesses, and of course the nations. So in terms of the new hires, the majority of them have been heavy duty mechanics. And that's a skill and a trade that's in great shortage, um, certainly in Northeast BC and, and likely across Canada. 
we were using contractors and our preference is to um, have our own heavy duty mechanics um, at our lines. So that's why there was a focus on recruiting heavy duty mechanics from abroad. We do have an apprenticeship program and I'll let Matt provide more information about that. But really it is to grow and train Kanuma employees um, into the position of, of heavy duty mechanic. But Matt, that's your, you're responsible for that. So yeah. I'm gonna put words into your mouth. No problem. Yeah, Lisa is spot on when, uh, when she talks to where to lead. Why didn't we hire local? And, and as re the, the reality is from a, a local standpoint, really right through, I'll, I'll say local being Prince George right through to Fort St. John Dawson. Getting the amount of tradespeople that we needed has proved very, very difficult. I've had the pleasure of being with Kanuma for the last seven years, almost since the onset. We've never been fully staffed in our mobile maintenance department. So the folks that are coming from uh, from abroad, they are uh, they are heavy duty mobile maintenance mechanics, uh, specialized on mining equipment for Caterpillar, Komatsu, Hitachi, et cetera. So, uh, just in relation to our apprenticeship program, I'm very proud of the fact we've, uh, we've brought on 12 apprentices in the last uh, the last year. Uh, I got four of those folks that uh, look like they will be right in the right seal here for the end of June. And now that we've got the apprentice program up and rolling, as four come out, we'll be bringing four more. So some of our, uh, our requirements to meet that apprenticeship program is that the folks are local. And when I say local, I'm, I'm meaning Chetwin, Tumbler Ridge, Dawson Creek, uh, Fort St. John, Mackenzie, that's what we consider for, for the local group to qualify for that. I'm sure as anybody that's been in Chetman for a number of years has seen people who will come and go and, and you know, Fort McMurray is still a heavy draw. We feel that in the mining sector as well. So when we're putting that investment into the, into the folks, getting them through the trade, we're really looking to be able to retain them and grow them in those communities. Thank you. Welcome. What are we doing? Thank you for coming today. Um, I have to say that I've, well, I've watched the coal industry of being in Chetwood for 17 years and I've watched it seemingly take a cycle every three years on the downward. Uh, and I feel that Kanuma is doing such a great job with management that we haven't seen that in seven years. And congratulations for your focus on local support because I think it goes a long ways. My question today is, would you consider adjusting your schedules uh, away from the seven and seven to urge these employees to have less capacity to work here and live away and more focus on simply being part of this community and maybe more towards a, a five and two as opposed to seven and seven. Yeah, I'll defer that one to Matt as well. <laughs> well so it's a great question. And, and it's, we, we feel that, that same kind of pressure both on the operation side of the business and the maintenance side of the business. So you're, you're spot on. Right now, all of our folks, uh, regardless of which department, will work on a seven and seven. What we have found going to a, a two days, two nights, four off, or a four on, four off, is again, we, we end up competing a lot in the mining industry with the Fort McMurray's. So, so with the three and ones, the two and twos, the, the fly in, fly out lifestyle that a lot of folks are used to, we're finding that even our employee base is saying, hey, we at least want the seven and seven. Uh, we have tried to go to a 14 by 14 to see if it would help to attract outside the area. And then with full honesty, our employee base at that specific site said, no, we don't want that. I, I don't want to work 14 night shift straight. And, and we, we listened to that. So, so we've not been successful to try to shorten the extent, uh, but increasing the, the extent of work duration, that does open up for, for further people outside the community. So that kind of answer your question? Uh, somewhat. I, I mean, you know better than me as to what's working with your employees and retaining. Yep. Um, what, of course, what I'd like to see is uh, all the wives and children moving to Chetwind Absolutely. and creating some some real prosperity here. Yeah, yeah, and, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. It's, it's, I've myself moved here about 16 years ago with my family for the same reason. I was tired of working on the road and, and being away with the, with the young son at home. So completely understand where you come from, where you're coming from. But again, the challenge we have is just, just there's just not enough people in Chetwind and Tumbler Ridge to be able to fulfill that. So we, we have to be able to broaden that horizon at times to be able to expand past that work center. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. That being said, and you're going to open, hopefully open Quintet, who's going to work there? <laughs> who's going to work there? <laughs> well, there'll be a transition plan um, for, to answer that question. So we don't have an answer to that question right now, although we do recognize um, that 
we want to sustain the coal production and um, we'll look for those individuals that will help us do that. But we don't have like a hard and fast answer. Like these are the people that will be working at Quintet. Yeah. Do you know how many people Quintet will employ? About 400. Oh. Yeah. So roughly. So it's about sustaining the same production as like the Wolverine mine as an example. Okay. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah. Um, you brought up uh, the permitting on two mines, the drill mine and the Wolverine mine. Um, in a nutshell, how is that going? So the Brule mine, what it is, it's to push back one of our existing pits. So all of the activity will be within the permitted mine area. And um, a majority of it is in an area that's already been disturbed. So it's just simply to push the pit wall back and to get access to additional coal. And we'll be submitting that application within the next four weeks. Um, so it's a, it's a more routine application. The Wolverine mine, we've been permitting uh, the Wolverine Herman area, which is a green field um, for a number of years now. And since we've purchased Quintet, we are refocusing our energy on Quintet and not Herman. Um, and the reasons for that is that there is existing infrastructure at Quintet. Um, it is a permitted mine. And it's largely brownfield as opposed to greenfield. So Herman has not been disturbed. So now we want to focus, we feel rightfully so, on restarting Quintet and focus on mining an area that's been previously disturbed um, and also that has the infrastructure to support, to support a mining operation. It has a huge plant. It has rail right there. Um, and it's in a really great location in terms of being close to Tumber Ridge. Okay, so the Brule mine, um, with with the permit extension, you said that that would carry to about 2026? That's right. Is about. that the lifespan of that mine then? Yeah, so it would go until about 2026. Um, we, are, uh, we are doing exploration um, around the Willow mine, and we will be submitting an application to do exploration close to the Willow mine, and then also around the Brule mine, we're doing exploration just to understand what the coal reserve there and is to look to look at extending the life of the Brule mine. And then uh, was I to understand you correctly that maybe the, the Wolverine mine could kind of, you know, the workforce there could possibly move to the Quintet? In a perfect world, that's what would happen. I don't want to say the workforce, because, <laughs> but in a perfect world, we would, we would taper mining down at Wolverine while we're restarting Quintet, so that there'd be, um, there wouldn't be an interruption and that it would just be a really smooth transition from the Wolverine mine um, to Quintet. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Well, thank you for the opportunity, and we look forward to presenting again in the near future. And at any time, reach out, um, positive or, or negative. We like to be given the opportunity to respond to all feedback. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, we have bylaw district of Chetwin zoning amendment bylaw number 1162 2023 requires third reading and adoption. Uh, motion for third reading. Second. In adoption. Oh, and adoption. A second. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Um, committee reports. Obviously, you know Mayor Coutre. Any council reports? Thank you. Um, so North Central Local Government Association annual general, annual general meeting took place in Dawson Creek May 9th through 12th. Chetwin and Dawson Creek co-hosted the event and it was a huge success. 
comments were made during the event that it was the best NCLGA conference they have ever attended. There was a tour to beautiful Chetwind from Dawson Creek on the first day. Councilor Wark and I each hosted a bus of participants. We stopped at the old paper excellence mill and witnessed the remediation that's occurring there. We visited Carver's Row and lunched at the River House. Um, in fact, they set up uh, the, the entire parking lot with tables and chairs and tents for us. Uh, we got the grand opportunity to showcase the rare beauty of our small community and it was very well received. During the banquet, our Chetland team was awarded the Community Leadership Award for Excellence in Social Responsibility for multiple community partnership initiatives and it was a very proud moment for us. The experience of working closely with, Dawson, with the Dawson Creek team over the last six months to organize this event proved that when we work together regionally, we become stronger regionally. And it's important that I recognize our team who participated actively organizing this event over the last six months. Councillor Wark, Deanne Ennis, Elaine Webb, Ellen McAvaney, Stephen McLean, and Tyra Kalondon. It was a pleasure to work with everybody. It was uh, turned out to be a really great event. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick report on the uh, Chetman Seniors Hall. They had their grand opening last week for their uh, new kitchen and they said to pass on a thank you to the council for their donation for it and it was it was well received. Thank you. I have a couple of reports here. So the Chetman International Chainsaw Carving Competition Association Society, I think it's Society. Um, they had a meeting on May 8th. Um, they have confirmed 17 or 18 vendors um, with a good food variety. Um, they have confirmed all of the hotels for the carvers. The carvers are um, all confirmed. They're, everything's going very swimmingly. Uh, they're very pleased with the space given at the location and they would like, uh, they like the lights and the new changes. Um, they have started their sponsorship shout outs. Uh, so watch the Facebook page for those. They're still waiting on a date for wood delivery, but I saw on Facebook this morning that the wood has indeed been delivered. So that's very exciting. Um, and the next meeting will be held on May 19th, um, just a couple short weeks before the actual event. Um, so I also attended the NCLGA conference and um, I just want to second what Julia said about um, the staff and council that uh, put in so much effort in co-hosting such an amazing event. It was a wonderful experience for myself and um, for a lot of others that I saw there. Um, a couple of takeaways, the uh, sheer volume of resolutions under the health and social development header shows the inadequacies of the healthcare system within the North Central boundaries. And I'm glad to see such a strong group come together to advocate towards the provincial government. Um, the Northern Leadership Through Climate Change Action Session one of the comments that were made that uh, I took away uh, was that we have to change our mindset that oil and gas is absolutely everything. Um, oil and gas didn't happen overnight and will likely never go away, but making small steps towards renewable energy is moving towards where we want to be. We don't have to make the energy, we just have to collect it. Um, another comment that stuck with me is that BC is 10 years behind the rest of the world when it comes to renewable energy. Um, in the community risk assessment, uh, community risk plans, the speaker stressed the importance of mitigating risks. As for, every, uh, as for every dollar spent in mitigation compares to seven to $10 after a disaster and expressed the importance of an active ESS, which I know that Chetwin does have one and they are meeting, um, I believe this week. Um, and uh, just to make another comment on what uh, Councillor Nelson said um, Chet, on Chetwin's leadership award, uh, I just want to recognize the past efforts of past staff and council that contributed to such an, a prestigious award for Chetwind. Congratulations, all staff. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other motion? Motion to receive the report. Second. Good. Okay. Uh, discussion items, email from South Peace Community Resources Society dated May 9th, 2023, letter of support. I make that motion that council provide a letter of support to the South Peace Community Resources Society 
for its application to Northern Development and Initiative Trust for the SPC RS Rural Expansion Project in Tumbler Ridge and Chatham. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Pass. Correspondence C1 email from Scion Strategies Limited dated May 17, 2023, RE Cross Cultural Training, June 22nd, 2023. I'd like to make a motion that Mayor and Council attend this cross-cultural training in Dawson Creek, June 22nd, 2023, from 10 to 3. Second that motion. All in favor? Questions? All in favor? <laughs> okay. Information items. C2, one, I1 to I13. Motion to accept this as information. Second. All in favor? Very good. Reports for action. RA1 Johnson Radiator Services Limited Development Permit Number 04 2023. I'd like to make a motion that council approve the issuance of development permit number 04-2023 to Johnson Radiator Services Limited for construction of a 16 by 20 addition to their existing building located at 4536 45th Ave Northeast, Lot 11, District Lot 494, Peace River, District Plan 24681. Second. All in favor? Question? The application is not signed. Does it need to be signed? The application um, in our package wasn't signed by, um, I believe it's uh, Mr. Mosier. The signature was to Oh, okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. RA2 2023 road repaving contract award recommendations. I'll recommend that council award the 2023 road repaving contract to Peter Brothers Construction Limited at the bid price of 569,168.25, including GST. Second. Any questions? I would just like a uh, clarification on exactly where these locations are, please. I'm not sure where the <coughs> cemetery access road uh, location is. Uh, the cemetery access road, um, that's the upper cemetery paved ring around the upper cemetery for vehicles to access it and, and equipment. Oh, okay, thank you. All in favor? Carried. RA3 low lift pump station trans transmission main upgrade contract award recommendation. I'd like to make the motion that council award the low lift pump station transmission main upgrade contract to Jacobson Contracting Limited at the bid price of $999,458.25, including GST. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Oh, questions? Sorry. Uh, just out of curiosity, like I said, we went with um, the, the lowest bid, which is great, but I'm wondering what the discrepancy was um, for the half a million dollars um, for the half bid. Was there, like, was there a significant decrease in materials or? Um, with underground projects like that, it's really a shot in the dark sometimes. Um, I know Nathan did include a different thickness of wall of pipe, so that would increase it a little bit, but not substantially. Um, Napa also, it's possible that they had enough work this year and they just wanted to see if they could 
of being worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. All in favor? Carrie. Is this uh, RA for uh, 2023 road repaving expansion of project scope. I'll make the recommendation that council approve the addition of a contingency in the amount of $116,000 excluding GST to the 2023 road repaving contract for the purpose of repaving an additional 220 meters of South Access Road from Nicholson Road to Wabi Crescent. Questions? Second. Questions? For the, this wasn't in our um, budget me meeting materials, correct? This is in addition to that, but we've already saved money, correct me if I'm wrong, um, for uh, getting a grant to cover the Nicholson Road sidewalk. Um, we did get a grant to cover 70% uh, of the Nicholson Road sidewalk. Uh, this extra amount, uh, so in our capital budget, I don't like to, talk in very specific numbers uh, <coughs> that we saved in an open setting, um, but we were low on on those projects below the budget amount, and this will, we will still be below the budget amount. Okay. Questions? Okay. Uh, is, is the prices coming in a lot cheaper than we expected? And part two, um, would we be wise to spend a little Um, the road repaving projects are coming in fairly close to what what I estimated based on previous years. I usually add a contingency to that, so I think this is basically that contingency. It's not a bargain. It's not a bargain, but it isn't. You know, but it is a, a good investment. And that's just for paving or road sidewalks on the South Access Road. Uh, that section was only for the road repaving. I know Ellen had wanted to add a paved trail in the boulevard there. Um, those two kinds of projects don't necessarily go hand in hand because they do need different equipment for paving the, side, the paved trails because it's quite a bit smaller of an area. Um, but I think that will be coming up in the future. She has some plans in the world. <clears throat> Any other questions? Bon Bear? Okay. Reports for information, April accounts payable, check list. I'll make the recommendation of the check register for the month of April 2023 totaling. $796,371.01 be received. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. No new business. Um, any public questions? Uh, meeting adjourned at 5.24. Oh,
Welcome to our 50th Mogs and Flats Sesame Street 50th anniversary. What a great turnout. Beautiful day yesterday and today. As you can see, we have a lot of events going on with the organizers that did this event. Is people from everywhere that came, like Vancouver, Chilliwack, oh gosh, Killer Lake, Alberta, Grand Prairie, a lot of people. And a lot of us are related because we are all did come from Moggison Flats and where I'm standing is where Moggison Flats was and I just just behind me here is where we lived and just like I said there's a lot of all the families that lived in Moggison Flats are here attending and it's everybody's having fun it's so great to see everybody I haven't seen for 20 years or so and Thank you to the organizers, Leanne McPeters, Adele Avery, Letha Dowd, and Lynette Desjardins and Ruby Knott. They did a lot of work to, to hold this event. And they did a beautiful job. For, for people that don't know what Mogs and Flats was, is, this is where we lived. This is where we squatted 50 years ago. Um, we just lived in shacks. We had no power, no running water, no nothing. We were all pretty poor, but we all survived. I, don't, I myself don't remember ever being hungry because we had hunters and everybody shared. And yes, yeah, so in 1971, they uh, built Wabi Crescent. I guess they started in 1969. I'm going to say it took a couple of years to build the houses in Wabi Crescent and that's where they all moved us to and the houses were not free we had to pay a mortgage and a dollar for the lot so everybody here now is Marks and Flats and Sesame Street so it's great to see Remember me, I'll remember. 